Welcome everyone to another quick class. Today's quick class is on dynamic seating assessment. Let's jump on in. Now I do see clients. I am in private practice and when I'm doing a seating and mobility evaluation I often do equipment trials with my client. But this is not always possible. It's great when it is, but sometimes I just may lack a certain piece of equipment that is appropriate for a client or it might be, and this is in the case of dynamic seating, that trying this component is simply not practical because it may involve modifying the frame. But I often hear from clinicians, I simply can't make this recommendation without actually trying it out, or perhaps the funding source is asking me to try it out as well. Well, a similar situation occurs with molded seating, right? So if we think molded seating is appropriate for someone, we can't provide a molded seat to see if it actually works. We'd have to do a shape capture and actually manufacture that product. Instead, we rely on clinical reasoning to let us know that this is an appropriate seated option. So how do we use clinical reasoning to determine if a dynamic seating component is appropriate? Well, we simulate it. So let's take the example of a dynamic back. During the mat assessment, I can sit on the mat table behind the client while they're seated at the edge. If that client extends, I move back with them rather than fighting against them, maybe about 10 degrees. Wait for that tone to relax, wait for that extension to diffuse, and then help the client return to upright. If this is an effective strategy, then I know a dynamic back could be an effective strategy as well because that's exactly what a dynamic back does. Now, some of our clients may not use a lot of extension. They might simply rock and roll. If they're moving and moving within their seating system and we observe this, we observe that rocking movement at the hips, that lets us know that dynamic seating, particularly a dynamic back, could be an appropriate option as well. We're going to watch a video that demonstrates this. This is Jonathan, and this young man has a significant amount of muscle tone. We wanted to simulate whether or not Jonathan would benefit from a dynamic back, and so I am sitting behind him on a mat table, and each time he extends, I'm moving back with him and then helping him to resume an upright position, just as a dynamic back would. And this let us know that this was a technology that he would benefit from. What about dynamic footrest? Well, this is actually very, very easy simply swing away the footrest hangers. So if the footrest hangers are removable or you can swing them to the side, do so and watch. Watch what happens. If your client extends but lacks now the leverage under their feet to build up that extension throughout the body, if that extension as a result is diffused, then dynamic footrest can be a very useful strategy. Another option is to try to move your client's foot around the foot plate. If their foot is cemented against that foot plate, they're exerting tremendous forces and dynamic footrest can again help diffuse those forces. Let's look at a video that demonstrates this. This is Jonathan, a young adult with cerebral palsy. He has very significant extensor tone throughout his body. We wanted to simulate whether dynamic footrests would work well for Jonathan, but putting these dynamic footrests on his chair would require modifications to the chair that made simulation impractical. Instead, I have swung away the footrests in order to see how his legs move when they're not strapped to the foot plates or pressed against them. You can see there's quite a bit of extension at his knees. A dynamic footrest would move with his legs, diffusing force that otherwise would provide him leverage against the footplate surface and encouraging those feet to then come back. We believe that Jonathan was a great candidate for dynamic footrests. 
And then finally, dynamic head support hardware. There are several strategies we can use here. First, we could move the head pad rearward about two inches. Then take about a two inch chunk of foam, preferably that nice springy foam, and put it between the head pad and the client's head. If they readily compress this foam, and this might be in a sustained manner, in a repeated manner, then that lets you know that a dynamic headset head support hardware uh, could be helpful for them because it would move in a similar manner. Another strategy is to place your hand between the client's head and the head support pad. If you're feeling a tremendous amount of force during extension, it could be again that this dynamic hardware is indicated. But beware, some of our clients can really uh, exert tremendous forces. A final strategy is demonstrated in the following video. To determine if a client is appropriate for dynamic head support hardware, remove the current head support. Next, place your hand behind the client's head. Feel for them actively extending against your hand. Next, assist the client in returning to an upright position. If the client repeatedly extends against your hand with force, this intervention is most likely appropriate for them. So what's our bottom line? Well, it is possible to assess the appropriateness of specific dynamic seating components through simulation during the assessment. This can help the seating and wheel mobility team to determine what is appropriate for recommendations. And the results of those simulations can be used in our documentation to help justify what we're recommending. If you have any questions about any of this information or anything about dynamic seating, feel free to reach out to myself or Seating Dynamics with your questions or comments. Thank you very much, and I hope you can attend another quick class in the future.